What's the name of the procedure used to ensure the equipment that's utilized to conduct a breath alcohol test is accurate? In just a moment, we're going to discuss just how often the wrong term is used or the right term is misunderstood. Hi, my name is Mike and I'm with Health Research Systems. We've been in the drug testing industry for over 29 years and we're doing these short videos so employers can utilize them in a daily safety meeting or for training employees and supervisors about the company's drug-free workplace policy. And this is video number 12 in our training series. And today we're gonna to talk about the difference between an accuracy check and a calibration. The most misunderstood term in breath alcohol testing and one of the most important responsibilities of a breath alcohol technician, better known as a BAT, is to ensure that the evidential breath tester or EBT that they use gives accurate results that can be relied upon. Every BAT that we train receives training in how to check and document that the EBT gives correct readings. What's the name of the procedure that checks the accuracy of an EBT? If you answered calibration, you answered wrong. The correct answer is any one of the following terms, an accuracy check, a calibration check, an external calibration check, or calibration verification, to name some of the most commonly used terms. The terminology used to describe the procedures used to maintain an EBT in accurate condition can be confusing, so we start every discussion on this topic by untangling the confusing terminology. First of all, there are two distinct procedures necessary to maintain an EBT in accurate condition. One procedure is called a calibration. The term that DOT uses in 49 CFR Part 40 to describe the second procedure is an external calibration check. The fact that the word calibration appears in both procedures causes people to confuse one term for the other. In order to minimize this confusion, we'll use the term accuracy check to refer to what DOT calls an external calibration check. You may think to yourself, but isn't a calibration the same thing as an accuracy check? It's not unheard of for personnel to use the term calibration as a catch-all word to refer to both procedures. If you use calibration as a catch-all term for both procedures, you've got some unlearning to do. The calibration procedure is not the same as the accuracy check procedure. So what's the difference between a calibration and an accuracy check? The calibration procedure makes an adjustment to the instrument to make it read more accurately. When doing training, we will frequently use the term calibration adjustment to emphasize this point. We use the example of, say, adjusting an older model bathroom scale as an example of a calibration adjustment. The old model analog bathroom scales has a needle pointer or a dial that moves whenever you step on the scale to show your weight. The process of turning a knob on the scale to make the scale read higher or lower is a calibration adjustment. The accuracy check procedure, uh, on the other hand, documents how accurately an instrument is reading. The accuracy check procedure does not make any adjustment to the device. It simply documents whether the device is giving results within the acceptable range of accuracy. So back to our example of a bathroom scale, we can perform an accuracy check on our scale by placing a known weight, say a 25 pound bag of dog food, on the scale and observing the reading on the scale. We haven't changed anything about how the scale reads, but we now know if the scale is reading high, low, or right on the money. To check the accuracy of an EBT, instead of a weight, we use what's called an ethanol standard, which is an ethanol gas with a known ethanol concentration. There are two types of ethanol standards, compressed ethanol gas tanks and wet bath simulators. Compressed ethanol gas tanks are the most widely used because of its portability and the ease of use. The uh, ethanol concentration of each ethanol gas tank is printed on the label of the tank. For DOT testing, the typical ethanol concentrations are 0.038 or 0.040. When performing an accuracy check, we use the EBT to test the ethanol gas and compare the reading on the EBT to the known concentration of ethanol gas. We now know if the EBT is reading high, low, or exactly correct. So which is more important, a calibration adjustment or an accuracy check? It may be counterintuitive, but in terms of choosing which procedure best supports the defensibility of an alcohol test result, we make the argument that the accuracy check procedure has more importance than the calibration adjustment procedure. Here's our reasoning. 
DOT regulations contained in 40.267 states that if an EBT fails an accuracy check immediately after a positive confirmation test result of O2O 0 or greater, then every test performed on that EBT since the last valid accuracy check is canceled. In other words, a successful accuracy check procedure validates a confirmation test result and a failed accuracy check procedure invalidates the confirmation test. That is why BATS are trained to perform an accuracy check as soon as possible after a positive confirmation test before dismissing the employee. If the EBT fails the accuracy check, the BAT has the opportunity to calibrate the device, perform another accuracy check, and retest the employee to obtain a successful test result. So what's the conclusion of the whole matter? Accuracy checks document a quality breath testing program. Understanding the basic concepts of a calibration and an accuracy check and getting the terminology right is essential to ensuring the quality of a breath alcohol testing program. And that's what an accuracy check does. It documents that an EBT gives results that can be relied upon to take disciplinary action and are defensible in court. There is no better way to demonstrate the quality of a breath testing program than a properly completed logbook that lists every accuracy check result and that shows the device gives consistently accurate readings. This is Mike with Health Research Systems, and we offer national drug testing programs and background checks to companies of all sizes. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at healthresearchsystems.com. Hit the like and subscribe button so you'll know when we release the next video in this training series, and thanks for watching.